Hello, this is Bas Jansen and today I thought I'd show you how I control my lights. So I had this idea, can't I control my lights from, for example, Ableton only using MIDI? Because when I was looking for solutions to control my lights, I found these very big expensive boxes and uh, external software that I need to use with it. Uh, I just wanted to stay within Ableton, um, use MIDI as, as just as I would for my music uh, to sync up my beats and uh, arrange my music and lights in the way that I wanted to. So then I created this little uh, magnificent little device here, um, which acts as a MIDI to DMX controller. Uh, you connect it to your computer uh, with micro USB here and then it will show up as a MIDI device just as your controller or synthesizer would uh, and then you can send MIDI to it and it will convert the MIDI to DMX and uh, control your lights. Yeah, so let's go through the hardware first. Uh, uh, this little thing uh, consists out of two parts. It's the microcontroller here on the top uh, and the uh, uh, module here on the bottom which consists um, of a MAX485 chip which converts the signal to the protocol DMX uses. Um, and yeah, and the processor on top here, this is uh, the Beetle uh, which uses an AppMega 32U4 microprocessor. Uh, we, we need uh, this processor because it has uh, native USB support. If you want to use Arduino uh, and program a firmware that acts like a MIDI device, uh, and then you need a processor with native USB support. Uh, th this processor comes in different forms. This is the Beetle, but uh, for example, Adafruit um, has a version which is called the Itsy Bitsy. It's a little bigger. Uh, and of course the classic Arduino Leonardo, uh, which this is based off. Uh, th that one is way too big. I chose the Beetle because of its size. Uh, you only need four pins anyway, so um, yeah, uh, I'm going for that one. Okay, so um, the MAX485 module here. Uh, let's get a little closer. Um, yeah, what I did first is, is get rid of these screw terminals. They're, they're way too big and, uh, and you don't need to use them. Uh, then I also desoldered these uh, header pins to make space. Uh, and then there's one, uh, one thingy here. Um, resistor R7 is not necessary. Uh, so I also desoldered that one. I'll, uh, I'll show you on the other one later. I read on the internet that uh, they put it there um, like as a term termination resistor but you want the termination resistor to be at the end of the DMX chain. Uh, somehow they put it there but it's not necessary um, and uh, yeah they recommended me to, to get rid of it. Yeah so the so this is the module from close up. Yeah so um, yeah what you need to do first is, is connect uh, the positive uh, and, and negative uh, uh, signals, so like a plus uh, five volts and uh, and ground uh, to the to the module here, which is on the back, uh, to power it. Then um, uh, you need to connect a digital in uh, to the transmit pin, which is on the back of the beetle. Uh, that's um, like digital pin one, uh, and then uh, at, finally you need to connect D10 uh, to both DE and RE. Uh, they, they, they both go high and low uh, when you need to transmit or receive uh, data. Then um, we don't want to receive DMX data so you can leave the RO uh, empty. And then the last thing you need to connect uh, the positive and negative terminals of the DMX. Um, the, the, the positive one goes to uh, B and the negative one uh, to A. Um, yeah, I have a little schematic uh, I'll show you. Yeah. So yeah, you can pause the video here um, if you want to take a, take a good look uh, if you're building this thing. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment below. I'll be happy to answer. 
Yeah, then a last little thing before we move on. Um, I also designed this uh, case, which I'll uh, put together with the repository uh, of the firmware, which will be in the comments below. Um, yeah, very easy. You can uh, print the model. Uh, you'll need to use your own slicer. Uh, but yeah, I just fit this in here, put the case on top. And there's a little hole in the top here for the LED to shine when you connect it. Uh, so you know it's uh, turned on. And we're back. I assembled the entire device, uh, glued it together, gave it a little bit of a black spray paint. And as you can see, the blue light shines through beautifully. This is where you connect your DMX cable to your light. Uh, yeah, let's see how it looks like in Ableton. So, back here in Ableton, let's go to Preferences first. Click on the MIDI tab. As you can see, a device named Arduino Leonardo now shows up in the list. It's called Arduino Leonardo because we're compiling to it as if it were an Arduino Leonardo, and it was a bit of a job to change the name in the USB MIDI library. Okay, so make sure to select track and sync on the output here. And because we want both track information like MIDI notes and control changes as sync information like transport, start and stop uh, to be sent to our MIDI 2 DMX controller. Then here in the session view I got a MIDI track, uh, I called it DMX out. Uh, this will be the track where I'll be uh, making my uh, light composition. At MIDI 2, select Arduino Leonardo as the output. Now all MIDI information on this track will be sent to our controller. In the arrangement view, I already have a clip uh, with a, a little demo light composition that I'll show you later at the end of the video. So let's open the MIDI editor. As you can see, I'm just composing my light composition as if it were music. Uh, let's dive into it a bit. So how does this work? If a note on gets triggered, so at the beginning of the note, uh, the channel will go high. And when the note off gets sent, at the end of the note, the channel will go low, will go off. And the velocity will determine uh, what value the channel will be. So uh, here it will be just off zero, and for example here it will be 255. Yeah, so in this way you can uh, like easily compose uh, on and off signals uh, for your lights, uh, which I'm doing here. But imagine if you want to smoothly transition the light from dark to bright, then you can use control chains. So go, go to this tab, uh, select channel, for example I select the channel 1 here, uh, and uh, you can draw in your dark to bright and to dark again. S smooth transition. Uh, yeah, and on channel 9 here, for example, I just have a light going on smoothly. Uh, this won't be uh, shown in the demo though. One note, you'll need to scroll all the way to the bottom here, uh, because note C-2 is actually DMX channel 0. It's not used, so the first channel that's used, channel 1, is C-2 here. Um, yeah, going through it a bit, this is uh, channel 2, uh, this is uh, channel 3, 4, 5, 6, and this is 7. I needed to get used to this a bit, but after uh, yeah, making a few uh, notes and compositions, then actually you get a feel for it, where to put things and how this uh, reacts uh, to the lights. Okay, let's go to Arduino. Yeah, first of all, of course, download my file, uh, load it up into the Arduino IDE, go to Tools, uh, select Arduino Leonardo as the board, uh, and also as the port. Uh, as you can see, it recognizes it as an Arduino Leonardo, even though I'm using a Beetle here. Uh, if you are using another microcontroller or processor, you maybe want to change some pin numbers. Uh, you can do that here. So uh, we got the LED pin, the transmit pin, and the enable pin for the DMX. 
if you're if you want to use a different uh, MIDI channel uh, other than one, for example, you're using other MIDI hardware in conjunction with this, uh, then you can change that here. Uh, for example, uh, change it to two, uh, but make sure you also change it to two um, uh, in Ableton, of course. Then I'm only using 24 DMX channels. Uh, maybe you want to use more, I don't have so many lights, uh, then you can change that here. Uh, the, the maximum um, for some of my con controllers is just 128. Um, if you're using the proper one, you can even get up to 512, which is the max of DMX. Then, one note, I've created a method down here called in the DMX channels. Um, when using lights, some channels need to be high, like 255, before other channels start to work. Uh, for example, a dimmer. Uh, so y you can do that here, that when um, uh, things get reset and or uh, at the boot of the device, um, these channels will be set correctly. Um, this is not my script. In my script, um, I actually have some channels put to 255 uh, to make my lights work properly. I think this is it for now. Um, if you're curious how this looks like, you can check out my previous video where I did a full cover of um, Full Stop, where I'm also using this device. Um, yeah, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. Uh, and I'll end off with the little demo that I've just showed you um, in Ableton. Uh, with some music uh, and a little video. Thanks for watching.